Well, good evening again. I'm Colin Tucker. And I'm John Chambers. Nice to be with you. Yeah, it's, uh, we hope not unlucky 13, but it's our 13th online show from Folk Beeston, brought to you by Second Time Around Folk Club in Beeston. So uh, you're welcome. And John, last week, uh, excellent show. And your song, which you kicked off the evening with, got quite a few positive reactions, which was nice. Anything to say about that? Well, I was pleased with the reactions, actually. I, I thought it might be um, non-reactive, so to speak. But um, I thought the whole show was great again, and well done, everyone. But yes, I enjoyed doing it. And Les Block is an extremely clever, funny uh, songwriter. And uh, I'm still working my way through the cheese. But we hope to have Les with us at the club, of course, in October, if things yeah, go well. We do. Fingers crossed for that one. Uh, watch this space, as they say. Anyway, this, this uh, week, what have we got? Well... We kicked off just now, of course, with um, Elisa Russell playing some rather nice harp music. If you missed that, uh, you only just joined us in time. There's some more at the end when we do the credits. So uh, please, please uh, listen on and, and watch the credits as well. Anyway, who's the first artist, John? Well, it's our old mates, Andy and Dave, often kick off at the Folk Club and kicking off again tonight with a very happy joining in song. Get your voices and guitars ready and let's have a good sing and play with a very happy, happy little number. We'll have a word with them in a minute. We're not quite sure what key they're in, but uh, apparently there's so many chords anyway, it won't really matter. You can sit at home and play all the right chords in the wrong order, but it doesn't really matter. Do your, just do your best, yes. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, after that, we've got uh, Dave Field, who's going to be doing a song that was attributed to the Carter family, I think, John, wasn't it? I believe so. Yes, they popularised it, but it does go back before their time, Dave tells me. But uh, Carter family songs are always enjoyable. Yeah. After that? Uh, we have Elaine uh, doing an instrumental. This is uh, one I don't know. Is it called Corrent? Corrent? Is that the way? Yeah, I don't know. But, uh, it's foreign to me, but that's okay. But it's I'm not sure. what we know. But then we come to our first guest of the evening. Um, as you'll hear from the conversation, Andy and Dave, and sorry, Andy and I had with them, um, they go back a long, long way since before even Second Time Around was, was formed, it seems. But they're going to be doing a Sandy Denny song. We look forward to that. I've seen them on video and they're very good. Uh, then we've got Helen and Chris, our good friends. They always give us a, a nice song. And this time it's one that they got from Jack Rutter. It's yep. a traditional song, but um, they enjoyed listening to Jack do it. And we look forward to their version tonight. It's on his CD, isn't it? And Hugh Miller is doing a, a song from the Car Copper family. So we've had the Carters and the Coppers tonight. A good combination, two excellent uh, families. And then we've got Oban uh, uh, doing one of his own songs. Uh, we, we've heard some of his songs before, and he, he, he always uh, puts great songs together. So I do look forward to hearing this one. I think it's the first time for me. Yeah, it's probably the first time he's played it. I don't know. And uh, there was a slight link to the, the last performers because uh, when you see it, Steve and uh, Oban introducing his song talk about sheds and um, Julie and uh, Steve Wigley who are our final guests are singing one of Julie's songs about a garden shed so there we are quite I a bit of quite a bit I have of heard this song before but as ever Julie writes some great songs actually yeah, this is yeah. no exception so I'm sure people enjoy this thoroughly Anyway, let's, let's move on quickly and we'll go straight to have a, a word with Andy and Dave to find out what they're doing. And here we are indeed with Andy and Dave and the song they've chosen, uh, I think, triggered a, a little memory from you, John. Yes, indeed. It's a happy little song. Good joining in song. So tell us what key you're in. But I'm a great fan of cricket and Derek Randall in the old days. A wonderful cricketer, a lovely chat and his autobiography was called The Sun Has Got His Hat On. So he must have been a, a great fan of the song himself. Yeah, what, what caused you to uh, remember this one to, uh, and to want to play it, Andy? Well, obviously I've known the song for some time, but uh, Dave and I, uh, every year, tend to go down to Kilworth House, which is near Lutterworth, where they do open-air productions. And we saw Me and My Girl, and they actually performed it there. And uh, it suddenly clicked that it's one we could have a go at. So uh, that's what we've done. Oh, nice one. Okay. Now, Dave, I think you've got um, a, a little story about... Uh, the yeah, indeed. The indeed I have. This, is, um, this song cost a DJ in Devon his job 
the reason being that it was written in the 1930s and the words, the original words, are quite distinctly racist. And he played the original recording without checking them out or stopping to think. Um, and I certainly have no intention of repeating the words that are in the original song, because since then the song has been considerably cleaned up and is now acceptable for people to listen to. So we will be singing the acceptable version, so we don't intend losing our jobs just at the moment. Thank you. Or losing our, uh, losing our viewers. Anyway, let's, let's have a listen to your version of The Sun Has Got His Hat On. Hello everybody, I'm Andy and this is Dave. And we're going to sing a song from me and my girl. And it's called The Sun Has Got His Hat On. One, two, three, four. Carter family song, uh, you might not think it, um, it's not the usual style, a little romantic though. My love stood under a walnut tree over the garden wall, she whispered that she'd always be true to me over the garden wall, she had beautiful eyes and beautiful hair, she wasn't very tall so she stood on a chair, many of the time I kissed her there over the garden wall, over the garden wall, the sweetest girl of all. There never were yet such eyes of jet, and you can bet you'll never forget the night our lips in kisses met over the garden wall. There's always a will, there's always a way over the garden wall. There's always a night as well as the day over the garden wall. We hadn't much money, but weddings were cheap. So when the old fellow was snoring asleep, with a lamp and a ladder, she managed to creep over the garden wall. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Elaine Chipchase here. I'm going to do an instrumental for guitar. This is by Celso Machado. Machado is a Brazilian guitarist and composer, and he bases a lot of his music on the folk tunes of his native country. So this is called Corrente, and that could be translated as Courant, and a Courant is a 16th century dance. So what we have is a Brazilian folk tune in the style of a 16th century dance. So this is Corrente by Celso Machado. Oh, and by the way, it's a guitar duet, so I'm afraid you've got to look at two of me on the screen at once.
Well, hello, it's great to welcome Jan and Paul Ramsey, who are now living in Grimsby, but have associations with, with Beeston. Yes, Jan, uh, hi there. And would you like to tell, you actually got in touch with us from nowhere, it would seem, out of the blue, but tell us your connections to the Nottingham area and Beeston folk in particular. Yeah, well, we noticed the Beeston Folk Club was kind of going on online. And we used to go to Beeston Folk Club from about 1987 to 90 when we lived at Long Eaton. Um, and we really enjoyed our time at the club there. It was like a thriving club at that time and we went people every week. Uh, and so we thought, well, maybe we'll just get in touch to see if there's any contact with people who used to go. And then we were invited to sing a song, which is very kind of you to let mm. us join in. Um, so, right. yeah, it was quite nice to just try and get some links with that. We have been to book clubs in other places, in uh, Aberdeen and Lancaster, yeah, that we've lived, where we've lived. But uh, Easton was like our main starter folk club, mm. wasn't it? So uh, it's nice to get back in touch. Well, w welcome back. But actually, as I think we've established already, it's it's... A, not quite a continuous yeah. uh, club, but it's a different club from the one that, that you were uh, involved in back then. I think in the, in a pub that doesn't exist anymore. We were just trying to establish that, didn't we? Where yes. are you at the moment? Just tell us where you are at the moment. So at the moment we're back in Grimsby, which is my hometown. Uh, so we're involved in Grimsby Folk Club and Louth Folk Club, which is one nearby. Mm -hmm. um, and so we've been here about 10 years now. So um, but for, prior to that, we went to, uh, there was a really good folk group we went to in Lancaster, or near Lancaster, Millthorpe. So that kept us going mm. in between. Children got in the way. And then we did have a gap with children. <laughs> we kind of scuppered the plans. <laughs> so, okay. Since they've left home, we've, yeah, we've done more and more singing. And I'm trying, not trying to raise our profile, but just enjoying participating and listening and learning and, yeah, all those sort of things. Great. Yeah. Tell us about the song, Paul, that uh, you're going to be doing. Okay, well, it's Rising for the Moon. It's a Fairport Convention song written by Sandy Denny. It was on their 1975 album, same name. We like it. It's one we used to play at Beeston. It's uh, quite a jolly sort of upbeat uh, song. And we managed to get a few harmonies in there. Quite an excuse for me to play a bit of harmonica and yeah it's it's a little more to be said it's supposed to be in theory about her time in the band but you have to really look hard in the lyrics to find that connection and association and the sleeve notes offer absolutely nothing <laughs> <laughs> but not a great deal to say that's all we can manage <laughs> well, let's, let's have a listen shall we Good okay. idea. thank you very much thank you. thank you lovely to see you travel over the sea and ride the rolling 
sky. For that's the way it is, that is our fortune. There are many ears to please, many people's love to try. And every day's begun, rising for the moon. That's good, wasn't it? That's uh, lovely to see Jan and Paul joining us all the way from Grimsby. Wow, we're very, we're very international now, cosmopolitan. Uh, good. You're going to yeah. mention about the Carol and Guitar Project. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, we've we've, we've uh, got a number of features, as you know. Now we're we're doing this feature slot, and a couple of weeks ago, uh, Steve Benford introduced the Carol and Guitar as the guitar in residence, and We've had a lot of interest in that, and it's already booked up till Christmas, believe it or not. But if you would like to borrow it, uh, and you're one of our regulars, and you'd like to have it to, uh, to have a play on and perhaps record a video, please contact us, and uh, you can go on the waiting list. But it's not going to be till 2021 now. Amazing, eh? <laughs> Okay, good. And uh, this is an opportunity for anybody who wants to feed in news of what's going on. And uh, we can tell you that uh, Carrington Triangle are running their sing around on Wednesday nights, and you can contact them at the Carrington Triangle Facebook page. And in fact, if you want to give us a, a send us a 60 second um, video with your advert for an upcoming event, then please feel free to do so. And also we, we're looking for further ideas for the this sort of mid um, program feature. So if you've got any bright ideas, do contact us. Okay, and one more to go because uh, Green Matthews, who were guests um, oh, yeah. a couple of weeks ago, they're doing a live streaming concert next Wednesday. So again, their Facebook page, Green Matthews, and uh, you'll find all of that. So Andy, we have a, a guitar in residence. Do we now have a wash? Uh, a washing bowl in residence. I don't know. We Jim might. Dunn is going to now do a little bit of DIY for you. Our resident Blue Peter man, as uh, I think you call him, Andy. So Jim Dunn and uh, how to make a base with a washing bowl. Hi, uh, I've uh, been doing a little bit of uh, construction, if you like. I've made a musical instrument today, quite proud of it really. My good lady hates it. <laughs> uh, well, you can't win them all, can you really? But anyway, I'll, I'll show uh, you what yeah. I've looked around and I came up with one or two items. Ah, I came up with um, this piece of wood, which was in my, in my garage, a bit longer because it was off uh, the butterfly tree, what do they call the damn things? Can't remember now. But anyway, they've got purple flowers and things. This is from last year to cut it down. And I stuck a little bird on the end, end of it. I got some nice string. And I got a couple of washing up bowls that were in the garden. Um, they're a bit smelly and so forth. And I, I've made a musical instrument, of which I'm very proud. Um, I don't know whether you can see it, I don't suppose you can. Let me see if I can sort of uh, get things down. You have to forget about me and just see, see the beast, see the beast. Right, so here it is. Uh, takes me back to the good old days of Skiffle. And it kind of works. So I've got this, just put the old foot on it and away we go. So you go, um, and I'll get it like that. Yep, right. Mm. 
<laughs> now I've got to get used to how to play the damn thing, but you know, it's uh, you've got some something there. There's a range. I've discovered I can do a full octave on it if I mess around with it. So I'm going to learn how to play it now. Uh, but anyway, it's sort of you know. These boots are made for walking, etc. So that's that. But there's a something else I can do with it. I can make it into an electric bass. Da -da. Da -da. Da -da. And here we go. learn to do now is, is, is tunes. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> so as you can see there's a lot of work to be done yet but we're getting there. Hello, I'm Anne Sempick and this evening I'm pleased to welcome Helen and Chris Morris. Helen and Chris, hello. Hi Anne. Um, How have you been? They're all fine. Yeah, okay. Not too bad. Okay, thanks. Too Carrying bad. on. Good. <laughs> good. Enjoying the nice weather. Yes, yeah, yeah it's, been, it's been good to see the thunder and the, uh, the rain as well, I must good admit. The garden. Yeah, the gardens have appreciated it, as I'm sure yeah. your allotment has. <laughs> Indeed it has, absolutely, yeah, uh, no doubt about that. This saves us having to go over there every couple of hours and water it, so that's, that's yeah. quite good. <laughs> yeah. So, um, I, I, I think you've told me that you're going to be singing the, the Hills of Longdon Dale this evening. That's right, um, yeah. And I wonder if you'd like to tell me a little bit about the song, please. Yeah, it's, it's one that we heard, we first heard it sung by uh, Jack Rupter when he was a guest at the second time around Folk Club. Um, and I remember sort of, as he was singing it, sort of closing my eyes and listening to the words and it really transported me back up onto the Pennine Hills um, from when I was a child. I'm from Manchester originally. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, my granddad used to take me up there. Uh, well, we used to go up as a family, um, but I'd, I'd toddle off for walks with my granddad and he'd be pointing out nature to me and the, there's a line in the song that Jack sings it's um, called says the skylarks teeming rapture down from the sunny blue and that, that line in particular is just the memory of being there with my granddad sort of pointing up and saying where is it I can hear it but see if you can find the lark because they go so high don't they and then yeah. it had tumbled down yeah. and it was so exciting to see as a little girl you know and it's uh, it, it, they're just really happy memories that the words of this poem um, mm. that Jack put to music bring back and, and made me think, yeah, I really, really want to learn this. It's gorgeous. I love it. Mm. And it's such a nice, simple tune. Mm. And when does the, when does the poem or, um, originate from? It's written by a chap called Amon Wrigley. Um, <laughs> and it was written in 1938. And it's from a, a, an anthology of poems that he's put together called Songs of the Pennine Hills. Oh, that's um, a... Yeah, it is. It's a really, because, and what makes it more special, I think, is that um, Amon was a, a wool mill worker all his life. Um, and he went to work at the age of nine as a, a half timer, as they called them. So in the morning, he was at the woolen mill. In the afternoon, he'd be at school. Oh. And obviously from the age of 14, full time in the mills. So his education was pretty basic, shall we say, the three R's education, but he actually started writing poems at the age of eight. Wow, that's astonishing. His, 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 I think his intrinsic love of the countryside in which he lived, the, the, the moors and the people of the moorland parish, and, and he, he, he was quite an age when he when he got this book published he died in 1946 at the age of 83 so it was only published 
what's that, eight years before he died. Um, and he, he never imagined that any of his work would ever get published. So there's a, there's a whole, I'm, I've got to get the book. I know that, I'm desperate. Now I've done a bit of research into it. I think I've got to have that book. <laughs> I think people, people in the folk club would be interested in it as well. So I don't know if it's possible to put a link to the book or the title of the book and the publisher um, on the, the folk club's website so that other yeah, people... can certainly say. download the book. Mm. Oh, okay. That sounds really good. It. Um, but we, uh, I want the book. Yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. I like well, the book. Perhaps, yeah, perhaps we can get a link to the book um, on, on the website so that other people can, can get it if they yeah. want to. Yeah. Have a look yeah. at that. Yeah. yeah. Thank you very much. And Chris, what did um, what do you enjoy about the song? It's, I enjoy um, very much playing the tune. It's um, it's one of those. Um, well, I find any, any tune that I can uh, stick get to stick in my, my head. It's quite fairly simple. Uh, I can just play it without having to look at any music, if, as long as it's in a uh, in a nice easy key. Yeah. So it's a, it's a pleasant one to just play along, and uh, I thought I'd um, we thought we'd uh, throw in another uh, tune in there as well, so uh, people can play spot the tune. <laughs> yeah. There's another hidden tune in there. Yeah, that was a bit of a challenge finding one that yeah, fits. It's a bit awkward, but, um, uh, we wanted it was either that or write a different harmony, and we thought, oh, hang on a minute though, should we try? I'm not going to give a, give the game away what the tune is. But should we try this with it? And it fit perfectly. So we were, were really happy yeah. with it. Perfect. Yeah, it seems to work okay. That's perfect. That sounds great. I hope you're going to tell us at the end of the song what the tune is in case we uh, can't guess. Oh, everybody will get it anyway, yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, <laughs> That's All right. Folk, know that tune. <laughs> That's great. I'm I'm really looking forward to hearing it. I've listened to the Jack Rutter version on, on YouTube and it's a beautiful song and I know it's going to suit your singing and playing style absolutely beautifully. So I suppose without more ado, we should hand over to Helen and Chris. Thanks very much. Thanks, Helen. Thanks, Helen.
Hi, um, I'm Helen Morris and I have here in the wood with me tonight um, Hugh Miller who's going to sing a song for us um, called um, Come Write Me Down, yeah, or al mm -hmm. alternatively known as the wedding song I believe. So, so Hugh, I understand you want to um, explain a little bit about the song and the style that the song's been recorded in. Yeah, it's, it's a song from the, the Copper family, uh, Bob and Ron Copper, though generations of the family have, have, have sung it. Um, and it was um, recorded in the, in the 50s uh, with the two of them singing in harmony, which is very unusual for British country singers. I mean, it's, it's common in, in the folk clubs, we, we do a lot of it, but when people were going around collecting the songs, there were very few cases of uh, people singing in harmony. I think one of the reasons for that is, is that a lot of the songs were collected from old people sitting in their kitchens and if they're sitting there by themselves there's no chance for harmony singing but also it doesn't seem to be much of a, an English tradition but the, the coppers are unusual and so because of that um, I thought I, I've sung the song for a long time but I thought I'll have a go at doing the harmony as well oh, wow. so that's where this came from. So you've done that by yourself you have you you've, you've harmonized with yourself? Yes. I mean, I had ideas of all kinds of good people who could come along and do it for me, but under these conditions, they couldn't, and anyway, they wouldn't have bothered. Uh, so I, I had to work it out myself, and I'm not very good at harmony singing, but um, it's, you know, we've got the time to try things out nowadays. Yeah, um, yeah. So um, I had a go at doing it, <laughs> recording myself singing one part, and then hearing that on the headphone while I was singing another part, and then... So three parts in total, oh, wow. uh, which I more or less worked out. It's a bit ropey, but uh, it, it was a good try, I think. Yeah, I'm, I'm intrigued to know how you did that, because Chris and I um, tried something similar with As I Roved Out, with piano parts and flute parts and harmonies, and the end result wasn't that great, I have to say. <laughs> so I'm really interested to hear this. and. Uh, yeah, so what can you tell us about the song itself, the Come Write Me Down or, or the wedding song as, as I know it? Yeah, well, it's, um, it's, it's a love song. Um, and it's, a, it's perhaps a bit unusual for traditional songs, which are fairly sexist, really. Um, I mean, this is where the, um, the, the guy offers himself generously to the girl because um, he's got you know, lots of resources. And the, the girl says, um, I don't want to give up leisure to be a wife, um, which is a fairly reasonable line to take. But after a bit of going backwards and forwards, um, she decides that, um, you know, she, she, she will go for it. And I've actually changed the, the last two lines um, because um, so they, they, they come to conclusion and they were married by asking the very next day. Um, and... The original is, now this girl, she is his wife, 
she'll be his comfort day and night. Which is fair enough, but I prefer to sing, now she's his wife, he'll prove her comfort day and night. Why not? Yeah, a little less sexist. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, so I'll go with that. But um, I suppose mainly it was, it's just a pretty song. And because I first heard it in the, the Coppers harmony version, which is, you know, it's very nice, better than the version I do. Um, I, you know, it was, it was something I always um, enjoyed doing. And now, now I've got the time and I've had a bit more experience singing harmony. I thought I'd ramp it up and see if I could do a, a three-part version. They only did a, a two-part version, but I thought while I was at it, I'll see if I could do a tenor as well. Okay, so you've outdone the Copper family then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well. <laughs> right, well, without further ado then, we'll, um, we'll hear your song. It's been lovely okay. talking to you. That's you, good, yeah, and, thank uh, you. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to hearing this. Thanks very much. Okay, bye. Bye. Come write me down, you powers above, the man that first created love. For I've a diamond in my eye, where all my joys and comforts lie. Where all my joys and comforts lie. I'll give you gold, I will give you pearls If you can fancy me, fine girl Rich, costly robes that you shall wear If you can fancy me, my dear If you can fancy me, my dear it's not your goal shall me entice To leave off leisure to be your wife For I don't mean or intend at all To be at any young man's call To be at any young man's call Then go your way scornful dame since you prove false I will prove the same for I don't care but I shall find some other fair maid to my mind some other fair maid to my mind oh stop young man don't you be in haste you seem afraid your time you will waste. Let reason rule your roving mind, and unto you I will prove kind, and unto you I will prove kind. So to church they went the very next day, and were married by in the cyphered say and now this girl she is his wife he'll prove her comfort day and night he'll prove her comfort day and Oh, hello again, everyone. It's Steve here, and uh, this evening I've got um, Oban with me. And um, Oban, a little bird tells me that your wife's let you out the shed this week. She has, Steve, and I've gone as far as drum roll. Okay, yeah. The garden. <laughs> oh, <laughs> well, you know, baby steps at first. What's it like in the garden then? Yeah, it's all right. The acoustics are a bit different. Uh, the lights a bit different. Um, it's not vastly different because it's only about probably a metre or two from the shed, so, yeah. Yeah, yeah. just uh, that first step, though, on the journey out. And I gather, am I right thinking she's also been acting as a film crew for you? Yeah, she has, so um, you'll probably see by the camera work, it's a bit wobbly, but, um, yeah, I do, I've, I've enjoyed having her film uh, rather than doing it by myself, and it's just me uh, on my own in the shed. Um, Kate's kindly filmed it for me, and then it's just it's a bit more dynamic. Uh, you've got someone there to share it with. So hopefully that comes across. 
Yeah, well, I think wobbly camera work is all the rage, isn't it, as well? It's a kind of that handheld, handheld gritty look. It's, it's what it's all about. And um, yeah. Yeah, and um, so I believe it's going to be a song, What You Wrote. It is a song, What I Wrote. Um, it's called Winter Sun. Um, and it's supposed, in essence, it's just about those nice, crisp winter mornings. Um, just when the sun's coming up and it's nice and bright. But you've got the whole day ahead of you. Probably no one else about, really. Mm. Um, yeah, I'm a big fan of an early morning walk. And I always think of this bit down in Lady Bay when I sing this song. Uh, just between the houses in Lady Bay and then the Trent, you've got a little nature reserve. And I can remember walking down there um, yeah. quite a bit. Yeah, those kind of places can be inspirational. And um, Well, I'm looking forward to hearing it. I have to say, I'm so impressed and, and envious of people who can write songs. I think it's a fantastic thing to, to be able to do. So, uh, yeah, very much looking forward to hearing it. Excellent. And lovely to speak to you as well, Steve. You too, as ever. Yeah. See okay. you in there in a minute. Cheers. <laughs> Walking with the waking sun On a winter morning In the space between the day And the night before Hope in the air and the bright morning sun Feel the unwind From a life on the run Frost nipped on cut grass. See your breath before you. See the life that's in the sky. Shadows are cast forward. Oh, the bright morning sun feel the unwind from a life on the run Curlews sing their song The leaves are gently breathing On a day that's still to come On a winter's morning oh, the bright morning sun feel the unwind from a life on the run Hello again. And it's great to welcome guests Julie and Steve Wigley. Hello. Hi, Hi Andy. Hi, Colin. Hi there. Now, tell us all what what have you been up to for the last oh I don't know ten or twelve weeks. 
Well, I thought it would be quite difficult and quite monotonous in, in lockdown, but uh, it's not proved to be the case. I did begin, I have to say, by completing wallpapering the bedroom, which I probably started about five years ago. Uh, but, but once I'd got one or two jobs like that out of the way, uh, we, we managed to uh, get into Zoom and uh, started visiting folk clubs all over the place uh, to so that we were able to continue to sing our songs and that's been great in many ways because we've met a lot of new friends that we wouldn't have come across and visited clubs that are probably a bit further afield than we've normally traveled you've actually been writing uh, songs and uh, i think you've entered various competitions do you want to tell us a little bit about uh, that uh, yes, well, I mean, I've always written songs um, since we've been playing together. We did, I did sort of half a dozen probably um, when we were in our old group in the 1980s. Uh, but, you know, since the last you know, few years when I've been uh, mostly retired, um, I've started writing more and more and uh, obviously recording. Uh, and he's had to learn them, of course. <laughs> uh, and we've managed to sort of, you know, we're on our sixth album now, which is really good, um, which actually is ready, but we can't actually produce it yet because the printers are in still lockdown. in lockdown. <laughs> um, yeah, but um, yeah, but also um, we've got a little songwriting challenge going on at the moment. Um, so we're, we're um, with a few friends. So I'm actually having to come up with something each month for that as well. So it's keeping us busy and we, you know, we're keeping practicing every day. And um, I say it's really nice to go around to these different folk clubs. And we've been asked to do one or two spots. We've been to um, Cambridge last week, which Cambridge, was really yeah. nice. To and Chester. There. Chester Folk Festival. Did a little spot there. And uh, we've been doing a few videos on the Raven Folk Club at um, Chester. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's sort of keeping us going, really. It's been really good. Mm. Excellent. I think you've got a new song for us now, have you? Yes. Yes. Very yeah, new. Um, well, it's actually about my grandfather's uh, shed, uh, which he built in 1935. Um, and um, he, because uh, my, my father and um, his brother Alf, um, they were growing up at the time before the Second World War. And, you know, Grandad Lavender used to be looking out of the window, seeing what they were up to and uh, watching them grow up. And, um, of course, they went off to war. Um, fortunately, they both came back okay, but you know they never really spoke too much about what what happened to them out there. And we've managed to find out a bit over the years. Um, but obviously, Grandad Lavender passed away quite a long time ago now, and the shed is now in um, my cousin John's garden, um, and he's quite proud of it. You know, keeps it in good nick, and uh, he often looks out of the window and thinks of how Grandad Lavender you know, tries to see through his eyes when he's looking out of the window. So that's how the um, how the story came about, yeah. I love it. It's such a personal story. And in fact, when Julie, for the first couple of times she tried to sing it for me, <laughs> she was in tears. I mean, it's just, it really moved me. It's a great song. Let's listen to it. Thank you very much for joining us on the show. And, yes, lovely uh, to see you. Thank great. you. Absolute pleasure. Thanks Thank for, for having, having us. <laughs> <laughs> okay, bye then. Hello everybody, um, I hope you're all safe and well and staying indoors. Um, we're going to just do a new song for you to try and keep you entertained while you're bored. It's about my um, grandfather, Grandad Lavender. It's about his shed, which uh, was built in 1935 and it's now in my cousin John's garden. Um, and every time John steps inside it, he sort of, sort of visualises what my granddad's thoughts might have been when he was inside it all those years ago. Um, and also childhood memories of um, when Grandad used to keep uh, fancy rabbits in there, which he used to show. That's sort of the end verse. So, hope you enjoy it. One, two, three, four. Grandad loving the shed was built.
With a cup of tea in hand, he stands and tries to visualize the world that could be on that very window. Let's see through our grandfather's eyes. That's it. That's it for another week, isn't it, Andy? What a shame. It's been a great, great show, though. And, it has uh, indeed, yeah. We must give thanks to Elisa Russell and that wonderful heart playing. Oh, lovely. And there's a little bit more. Uh, if you want to listen over the credits in, uh, well, as soon as we've finished, in fact, now. And, uh, well, I we want to thank all the artists, obviously, particularly Jan and Paul, who joined us from Grimsby. 
uh, um, which was great, and go back a long way in the, in their connection with Beeston. Yeah, and Julie and Steve, who have been regulars uh, at the club. Um, yeah, that's today. right. And what we got next week and coming up generally? Next week on Doors Open, we've got Dave McGowan. Excellent, yeah. And uh, for the guests, we've got um, somebody related to you, Andrew Tucker. Oh, no. And do it. <laughs> <laughs> another chip off the block. And Keith Hinchcliffe, uh, an amazing yeah. guitar player who lives in Sheffield. Yeah, and do we playing a guitar? I think you'll recognise. Yeah. Uh, beyond that, beyond that, who have we got? We've got um, a, new, a new entry on the doors open, the Mick Pierce Band. Mm -hmm. But for guests, we've got Summer Tapes from West Bridgeford, and Pete Morton. <laughs> uh, two of my favourite local bands, really good. So you can't miss that. You've got to join us next week. And uh, thanks for joining us this week. Okay. We'll see you next week, next Friday. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye now. <laughs>